Now in New York, I get access to some of the greatest Italian products you can find. And good fresh ricotta is one of them. But not everybody has access to these kind of Italian ingredients. So today we're gonna learn how to make fresh ricotta from scratch at home. Then we're gonna turn that into whipped ricotta toast. So if that sounds good to you, let's just jump right into it. My God. It starts with milk, really good milk, grass-fed milk, whole milk to be exact. Pasteurized milk, but not ultra-pasteurized. You cannot use ultra-pasteurized milk for this recipe. This is some local milk, grass-fed stuff. It's non-homogenized, so I gotta kinda shake it up. Might be some separation. And I have about a gallon of it. So it's really gonna take three ingredients to make this, and not a lot of time. First goes the milk. Now, ricotta is actually a byproduct of mozzarella cheese making and a vital part of the economics of Italian cheese making. The actual word ricotta means recooked. After you make mozzarella, there's this leftover whey, and Italian cheesemakers found a way to use that extra whey and make another product out of it, which is ricotta. We're not cheesemakers. Thankfully, we don't need extra whey. We can make it with milk. Next goes in a nice pinch of salt. Then we're gonna bring this mixture up to about 180, 190 degrees, right below a boil. Then we're adding about a quarter cup of white vinegar. At home, you can kind of rely on white vinegar or lemon juice. A quarter cup of either will work. So we're gonna bring this over to the stove and get it heated. Get the pot on medium heat, and again, we just wanna bring it up to about 190 degrees Fahrenheit or just below the boil. While the milk is heating up, make sure you use a flat-bottomed wooden spoon every few minutes to make sure that the milk is not getting scorched on the bottom of the pan. While the milk is getting hot, get a bowl prepared with a fine mesh strainer over a few layers of cheesecloth ready to go. Now if you see a little foam, you can kind of strain it out. You don't have to, but I saw some and I wanted to remove it, so I did. Once the milk has reached its temp, turn the heat off and add the vinegar while stirring and then just let that sit for about two minutes and you'll see the ricotta start to form before your eyes. What's basically happening is that the hot milk plus the acid, it lowers the pH level and denatures the protein and causes what's called flocculation. This fun new word I learned, which just means that the protein particles in the milk separate and coagulate to form this fine curd that floats on top of the whey that is the ricotta. Then using a spider or a slotted spoon, fish out the ricotta and add it to the cheesecloth and let the moisture drain out. Now there's your ricotta and you're just gonna let this thing drain and now it's kind of just like up to you, the consistency. You could use it now. You could let it drain, get drier. What we're gonna do is separate out the whey from the ricotta and then whip it up. Make it nice and smooth and perfect. Again, how long you drain it is gonna depend entirely on what you're looking for as your end result. Right now it's been about 20 or 30 minutes and you've got this beautiful ricotta here. That's a really nice consistency. It's still got some moisture in it, but it's nice and dry. It needs some salt, but it's really, really good. Now that's good just how it is, but we're gonna whip it. We've got our little kind of mini attachment up top. Just gonna get the ricotta in there. So I'm just gonna add a pinch of salt to it and to turn it into like this real luscious, creamy ricotta, I'm gonna add a little touch of cream a tablespoon at a time until we get it to the right consistency. If you didn't have cream, you could just work in some of this whey until you get it to the right consistency. Let's see where we're at. Um, why isn't it working? Let's see, what's the matter with you? Come on, get it together. You just wanna slowly work in the cream until you reach a cloud-like consistency. I guess it's also very similar to like a whipped cream. Mm -mm. You got your fresh ricotta and you got your whipped ricotta. So now we're gonna make some whipped ricotta toast. I'm gonna take some ciabatta bread, cut that into slices and then toast that off real quick in a toaster. Then I'm gonna take the whipped ricotta and add that to a Ziploc bag that's gonna act as a piping bag. Mm. 
I'm gonna slice a clove of garlic in half. And then once the bread is toasted, I'm just gonna rub that garlic all over that toasted bread. If you've never rubbed garlic on toast before, it's gonna set it off to a whole new level and it's gonna blow your mind. Then we're gonna take the whipped ragotta and we're just gonna pipe it into this beautiful little pattern right onto the toast. This is inspired by Missy Robbins, Italian chef out of Williamsburg. It's just beautiful clouds of ragotta on bread with a little bit of sea salt, a little bit of olive oil, forget about it. So we've got some fresh ricotta, and then we got our whipped ricotta. My God, all it needs is a touch of olive oil. You could drizzle some honey. You could throw some vegetables on here. You could throw some cinnamon for a sweet toast. There's so much you could do with it. Ricotta is a key ingredient. Make sure you go make this, because we're gonna need ricotta in the next episode. So you're either gonna go buy it, or you're gonna make it from scratch because now you know. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.